you want to make your hundred thousand dollars and you don't have it yet can you celebrate the feeling of abundance that you have when you can put that 50 bucks in the car to pay for the gas right those moments of feeling into the abundance that you do have actually create more of what you want I'm Amy Porterfield, ex-corporate girl turned CEO of a multi seven-figure business. But it wasn't all that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the budget, and the time to focus on growing my small but mighty business. Fast forward past many failed attempts and lessons learned, and you'll see the business I have today. One that changes lives and gives me more freedom than I ever thought possible. One that used to only exist as a daydream. I created the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step -step strategies to help you do the same. If you're an ambitious entrepreneur or one in the making who's looking to create a business that makes an impact and a life you love, you're in the right place, friend. Let's get started. Well, hey there, friend. Welcome back to another episode of Online Marketing Made Easy. Holy heck, I cannot believe this is the first episode of 2024. Can you even believe it? Today, we're diving into a topic that I really don't talk about that much, or if at all, but I'm so curious about it, and I thought you might be too, and that is how to manifest success in your business. Now, before you convince yourself that manifestation is a little too woo-woo, or maybe you've tried it in the past and it hasn't worked for you, just trust me on this one. You don't want to miss this episode because I have the perfect guest joining me today to give us the lowdown on how manifestation actually works. And since I'm always keeping you in mind, of course, I also ask her to share the process for how to incorporate it into your life because I know you love a good step-by-step. So who better to be our teacher today than my incredible friend and next generation thought leader, that's what Oprah called her for the record, Gabby Bernstein. And she's no stranger to online marketing made easy. I'm sure you are already familiar with Gabby's work, but if not, Gabby is a spiritual leader and manifestation expert who teaches her students how to unlock their full potential through manifestation practices. She's also a best-selling author, multiple times over, and a host of the podcast, Dear Gabby, which reaches over 1 million listeners every single month. So whether you want to manifest becoming your own boss, doubling your revenue, or shifting your outlook on life to be more of an abundance mindset, I think you'll love this episode and the invaluable expertise that Gabby has to offer. Let's get started. Well, hey there, Gabby. Welcome back to the show. I'm so thrilled to have you. Amy, I would have nowhere I'd want to be right now than with you, truly. I love spending time with you. And listen, I was thinking about manifestation and how I want to embrace it more in the new year. And then I know so many of my listeners want to as well. And I thought there is no one on this planet better to talk to than you. But before we get there, I want to know since... The date of this airing is January 2nd. Happy New Year, my sweet friend. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I want to know what are you most excited about for 2024? I'm most excited about getting back on stage. I spent last year like podcasting and just not on like still I think in a little bit of like COVID mentality like oh, like we don't do live events or so. I don't know. Like I put on a huge live event exactly around this time last year and it was so amazing and so elevating. And I did a bunch of talks throughout the year that were booked, just outside people booked me to give talks, but didn't put on any of my own talks in the whole year, the whole year. I spoke at like a lot of different people's events and I spoke at a recovery center every month. So it was like in action, but I didn't put on my own talk for the entire year. And I looked back and I, I realized how heartbreaking that was for me because, you know, there was like noise in my company about like, oh, we'll take the team out. It's too much. It's like, but this is what I do. Like, why am I not doing that? It's my art. And and how have I I've been I've been ignoring my art and or not ignoring it, just like pushing it to the side. And I'm most excited about getting on a stage. So 
I have a live event in February that's already sold out, so I'm not going to talk about it here because I don't want anybody to try to get in there. But I'm going to um, try to do it. I think I might go back to like how I first started my career eight, 19 years ago and go back to like monthly talks, maybe just in New York. That could be exciting. Kind of get back to your roots. I think that's going to feel good. Girl, I need creative energy to move through me. That's what I want. That's my. That's what I'm excited about. Well, the reason I wanted you to come on the show is because I think a lot of my audience want some of that creative energy and they want to feel good in 2024 and go after what they want. And they've got big dreams. And, you know, this is a marketing podcast. So we talk about strategies and funnels and list building and webinars and how to put together a plan. What we've never talked about is how to manifest what you want. So first of all, Is there a place, I know you're going to say yes, but talk about this a little bit. Is there a place for manifestation and business? And where does it fit in in all the funnels and list building and taking action and getting it done? Well, they they both have to coexist because if you have that vision and you have that desire and you have the marketing skills to bring the vision and the desire to life, then you have the perfect match for success. When we try to bring any kind of great marketing tactics to life without the vision and the energy and the enthusiasm and the joy, then it's a bunch of bullshit. And if we try to manifest successes but don't have the bravery or the courage or the willingness to do the heavy lifting of actually marketing the product, then that's a bunch of bullshit too, because it's not a bunch of bullshit. You can have a vision and you believe in it, but if you're not going to actually take responsibility for getting it out into the world, then what are you doing? It has to be a co-creation. It can't be you meditating in the corner and it can't be you just you know pumping out email copy. It has to be both. Amen to that. But tell me this, I should have backed you up because the first question I should have asked is, what is manifestation? Like, At its core, what is it? When we are in a belief system of what it is that we desire, when when what we want to create is something that we believe in, we can put our energy and that faith behind it. And then with that energy and with that faith and with that belief system, our desires can unfold with ease and joy. And that doesn't mean that we don't show up and we don't do the work, but it means that we are greatly benefiting all the work that we do because our energy is a match for what it is that we're creating. One thing that I love about you, and I've been around you enough to know this, is that you don't really force or white knuckle anything. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah. And when I have been forced to white knuckle, I break down because my, for instance, just something recently we were talking about offline, there's been a lot of like resistance, 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 obstacles, obstacles, obstacles in this one certain area. And I kept, you know, it's kind of screaming, but it felt like I was screaming at a wall, you know, this has to stop, you know, sc- screaming loud. Like I'm realizing there's an obstacle. And then what I realized recently is that when we allow ourselves to have those breakdown moments of recognizing that resistance, because you know, I I don't want to do anything that isn't with ease. And so when I notice that I am doing something that is not with ease or it is pushing or it is trying to manipulate or control something or it just feels like I'm yelling to myself in a private room, that's really uncool. I recognize that the breakdown of that obstacle, that that being pushed against that obstacle and pushed against that obstacle is just the universe reminding us that if we're not living in our highest, best, most aligned way and not fully integrated in what's bringing us joy and not fully integrated in the wonders of the universe, then those obstacles will consistently be put in our place because those obstacles are detours in the right direction. And if we don't make that shift in the right direction, we'll just keep hitting the obstacle and hitting the obstacle. And hitting the obstacle. But when we actually say, I'm going to pivot and I'm going to turn that corner or I'm going to try something new, I'm going to rip off the band aid, I'm going to stop doing the same thing that's causing the same results. The same thing that beautiful Wayne Dyer said when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. When you start to detour in the right direction, then those obstacles have more purpose in your life. Mm, that makes perfect sense. 
So a lot of times on this podcast, we talk about like step-by-step processes. And I was just curious because I am a beginner with manifestation. I'm curious if there's a process to manifesting. Like, is there a step-by-step kind of framework for something like this? And I want to get a little specific. What if someone said, I want to manifest that I make $100,000 in 2024? Like, can you manifest something like that? And is there a step-by-step process to do so? Well, Amy, my manifesting challenges were were on day two. And it's a 21-day process. of, And I'm going to give you guys a little bit of insight into what it is and here teach a little bit of it today. And we have three more days on January 5th. It's gone. You can't sign up outside of my app. So you can sign up at any time in my app you have it, uh, the Gabby Coaching Membership. But if you want to just test out the challenge, just try it out. It's gone on the 5th. But it's a 21-day process that shows you the step-by-step actions that you can take to align your energy to be a magnet for what you desire. And it works. So let's start with the first step right now. And if you're like, yeah, I got to get in the challenge, deargabby.com forward slash manifesting challenge. So where would we begin? It starts with a desire. It starts with those moments in our life when we say, I want this outcome. I want this feeling. I want this desire to come into my life. And when we start to claim that yes, we send a message to the universe that we are yes for what we desire and the universe will reflect that back to us. The universe The energy around us, when I talk about the universe, I talk about the energetic frequency that is constantly a magnetic force reflecting back to us what it is that we're putting out. And when we put out a yes, I am an unapologetic yes for this desire, then the universe begins to transpire and support and co-create with us. And the actions that we take begin to feel much less efforting and far less controlled and far less pushed and much more effortless. And that is starting with the yes. So you said, like, what are you excited about this year? I always like to say, what are you a yes for this year? So if your listeners are with us right now, you know, what are you a hell yes for in the new year? Are you a yes for financial abundance? Are you a yes for romance? Are you a yes for making a baby? Are you a yes for me, for me, I'm to be creative in my creative flow. That's what I'm a yes for. I'm a hell yes for that, Amy. And that's where we have to begin. That's step one. So I'm a hell yes for, if we go back to the first example, making $100,000 in my business. I'm a, I'm a yes for that. Well, now that you know your desire, what do you do with that? Well, then you start to look a little bit more closely at all the ways you might be blocking that yes. So are you walking around focusing on lack? Are you putting all of your energy and your intention into pushing something, pushing your work online, pushing your work out to the world? Are you trying to control that outcome? Are you walking around with that desire, but you have this voice in the back of your mind saying, good luck with that, like the inner critic? Because if we're not willing to look at the beliefs that hold us back from that manifestation, then we're just going to be, once again, forcing it, manic manifesting, trying to make it happen, trying to force it to happen. So get honest with yourself about the ways that you might be blocking that desire. Just become the witness of it. Just notice it. Just with love and compassion, just look at the ways that you might be playing down that desire, right? So I have this this desire to be creative and it was being played down all last year with, with me accepting that story of, oh, it's going to take out the team or it's too much or we have to focus on this, or we did, you know, and that's that wasn't necessarily even my story. It was a story I chose to lean into. And it's a story that kept me out of my creative energy. And so listening to the voices that you are aligning with, listening to the story that you're telling, you know, I think that if you're not actually willing to do the work, then you're not going to get to the hundred thousand dollars. There's the other piece, which is how do you do the work? This is where it's, this is a beautiful lesson that I love to teach entrepreneurs, which is the spiritually aligned action method. It's in my book, Super Attractor. It's one of the things I think people love to write about most if they're an entrepreneur, if they're a marketer or anything like this. And it's looking at the situation, the the desire that you have and making sure that that desire you have for your $100,000 is backed with, first backed with love and service. 
right? So how does this bring more love and service into the into my world, into the people around me, into the people I work with, into the people who are the beneficiary of this work? Where's the love and the service? And you can find that in any career path, I promise. That's number one. And then making sure that that love and that service is backed with a sense of, of faith, right? So the faith has to say, well, you know, maybe there's a never made $100,000 a year, but I'm taking Amy's course and that gives me a lot of hope, right? Or I have faith in this desire and I have faith that I'm a hardworking person. Or I have faith that I'm courageous enough to make change. So really tapping into that faith. And then every single action that you take to bring that desire into form has to come from that place of service, love, and faith. And that's spiritually aligned action. So don't send that email unless you are fully tapped into service, love, and faith. Don't post that Instagram unless you are tapped into service, love, and faith. Do not pick up that call and pitch your business unless you are tapped into service, love, and faith. Don't even jump in and try to read a book on marketing or listen to even any of Amy's courses or her audios unless you're in that space of service, love, and faith. Because if you're not, you're in an energy that's forceful. You're in an energy that is pushing. You're in an energy that's controlling. And there's nothing sexy about that. There's nothing attractive about that. And the magnetic force that you have within you will not be lit up when you're in that lack of service, love, and faith. Ooh, that is powerful. I could use that every single day. That is powerful. So I was thinking when you were saying that, you know, I've heard people talk about manifestation before and you have to act as if it already happened. Is that something you teach? Like you wake up every day and you believe this has already happened for me. Well, I think it goes back to the lesson I just taught, which is that I believe that we can act as if and we can show up and we can say, yes, I believe that this is possible and I feel this way today. And I do believe that the feelings that we have are what attract into our life, are what manifest what we desire. But if we're in resistance or we're in lack or we're in the story that's blocking, 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 then acting as if is just acting, it's just like fake acting. You know, the best actors are the ones that actually feel the feelings of the character. So if you want to act as if properly, you do it by assuming the feeling and the energy of who it is that you want to be. And that energy and that feeling is what manifests. So for me, Am, you know, I was looking at all these things that were in the, the detours in the way of the creative force. And I have, I've had to clear those detours. And I've had to make space for that creative feeling to come back then really commit to being in that creative feeling, right? So let's say you want to make your $100,000 and you don't have it yet. Well, then can you celebrate the feeling of abundance that you have when you can put that 50 bucks in the car to pay for the gas, right? Or can you feel that feeling of abundance when you can go and enjoy that latte or when you wake up in the morning and it's warm in your bed, those moments of feeling into the abundance that you do have actually create more of what you want. When I think about manifesting and how it is aligned with actually showing up and taking action, I'm curious, what are some big mistakes you see people make when they're like, "I'm Gabby, I'm trying to manifest this, but it, it's not happening. It's not coming true. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Like, what are the mistakes that you tend to see people make when they are manifesting? Well, there's the manic manifestors, right? I think I could be that. So let's talk about it. <laughs> I don't know that you're a manic manifester necessarily, because I think that you are pretty aligned with your super attractor power because you believe so, so, so deeply in what it is that you do. And you believe so deeply in your intentions and your desires that they come into form pretty, pretty, not without effort, but they are joyful to bring into form. So I don't think that you're a manic manifester. A manic manifester is someone who's like, well, I'm, you know, doing all the meditations and I'm doing all the affirmations and I'm doing all the da, 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 and I'm listening to all the books and I'm pushing and I'm, I'm, I'm showing up and I'm putting out the Instagrams and I'm putting out the emails and I'm putting out the sales pages and I'm doing, 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 doing. Why isn't it not manifesting? And why? Because all that efforting, all that doing, doing, doing is blocking, blocking, blocking. And so what would you want to look at? You'd want to look at the energy that you're 
bringing to each day. You're coming to the day with, I've got to force something to happen. I have to push something to happen. I have to make something happen. I have to align with something to happen. But you're never focused on, I have to believe in what I'm creating. And I have to feel empowered and joyful about what I'm creating. And if I feel great about it, and if I'm having fun doing it, and if I believe in it, then it will be, period. Will it be exactly as you expected in the exact time and order? No. That's the other thing that people block their manifestations by thinking, oh, well, I've got to have it at this moment, or it's got to be this way. And I always say that the secret to manifesting is to forget what you think you need. Ooh, why? Forget what you think you need. Why? Because as long as you think you need it, then there's a problem that has to be solved. But what if you were, instead of thinking, I need this thing, you were believing it could be this or something better? Okay. And this is big for me because you know me personally and you helped with my book launch. Uh, you were my dear friend throughout the whole thing. You know I wanted the Today Show or Good Morning America really bad. I wanted a morning show. Even though people would tell me, it's not going to move that many books, Amy. My ego got in the way and I wanted it and I did not get it. Well, you just said why. My ego got in the way. It did because... It wasn't really sad. I couldn't, honestly, I'm I'm embarrassed to admit this on the show, but I have to admit it. I can't sit here and say, I wanted to get on the, the Today Show for love and service and faith. There was none of that. It was like, I want to prove to myself that I've made it and I'm important enough for them to want me. And I also felt like I needed it to be successful with my book. And you just said that. If I feel like I need it, need it, I'm holding on so tight. And it did not happen for me. And I think a lot of this is why. It's not, I think, I know. I actually watched you through that. I watched you through it. I have probably had this conversation with you at that time because when it's for, you literally said it, my ego was in it. As long as our ego is in any way, shape or form attached to the manifestation, it will not work or it will come into form and it will fall apart. And so we can say, there's nothing wrong with saying I need something, right? I need help. I need support. But why do you need it? Do you need something that's going to support you and support the service and the love and the faith of what it is that you're doing? Or do you need it because you need to serve your, serve your ego, right? So the why is always the question. And the need also does imply lack. So I said to you at the top of this, like, I need this thing to do what I need to do. And actually, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to get into my creative force and attract that thing that I believe I need to help me do it in a better way, right? Because I don't think I want to be, it's a little, little bit of semantics here, right? Because it's like, you, of course, you can, I look at your, your funnel and say like, I need somebody to read this, right? <laughs> like, great, that's important, go for it. But there's a difference between saying like, I need something just to get help versus I need to force something to feel good enough. I agree because when I said I need to be on the Today Show for my book to be successful, if you ask me, why do you need it, Amy? I would have probably, if I was being really honest, I wanted to feel important. And so that's where I think it went wrong. And, and versus I need people to buy my book so that they can get value from it and quit their nine to five job and, and create something. I need readers in order to get my message out there to help people. That's a very different message. So it's so much of energy, which was a, a big question I wanted to ask when you came on, this concept of need. I see where we can go wrong with it. But also I've heard you talk a lot about letting go of control with manifestation. And I've heard you say that in order to manifest, you have to relinquish control when manifesting. What's that about? Well, just like the manic manifester or just like the ego attachment, when we're trying to control an outcome, we are absolutely in the way. And it doesn't mean that there aren't moments in time where we have to step up and work harder and really be make sure that we're, we're being very vocal about what we have to create or whatever it is that's a big difference because that's a spiritually aligned action, right? If you may have to like step in and work for five hours to just do a sprint on some email campaign because you're so committed at that moment, but you're having fun while you're doing it and you remember the service and the love and the joy and you're like feeling into your client avatar and you're just like in it and loving it, that's fab. But if you're in it and you're like, I got to force 50 more emails out of me because I need to just get it done so that I can push this thing forward and I can push and push and push, you are blocking. 
And that block also is, I need this outcome, I need this outcome, I need this outcome. Blocking. I need it to happen this exact way. Blocking. Forget what you think you need. Have more fun. And when you're not having fun, raise your hands in the air and say, I need a shift. I need to see this as a detour in the right direction. When you're not having fun, it's a detour. You've hit a wall. That makes sense to me. And when you talk about manifestation, how much of it has to do with affirmations and mantras? Is that a big part of this? Well, once again, you could say all the affirmations that you want, but if you don't believe them, then you're lying to yourself. You're just repeating something that's a lie. So I love affirmations that are in alignment with where you are in the moment. So during that period where I was having this like kind of inner shakedown, we were just talking about earlier, before this call, before the Zoom, um, I was saying to myself, not I am there, I am there. I was saying, I'm open to creative possibilities. I am willing to receive direction. I am surrendered. Those are the affirmations I was saying. I'm giving up. I give this over. Show me what to do. These are prayers. These are affirmations. These are a full alignment with where I was at in that moment. Now that I'm out of that moment, I am ready to receive exactly what I need to stand in my creative force. Okay. I love that. I am ready to receive. I just gave that to myself just now. I'm ready to receive exactly what I need to stand in my creative force. And the part that you said exactly what I need, to me, I hear giving up control because you want something, you, you're, you've you're you got your eye on you know the prize, but at the end of the day, it might not shake out exactly like that, but it might even be better. I, I really do believe that. Sometimes I have wanted things so bad in my business that I have not gotten and I look back and sometimes I think, thank God I didn't get that. You always are going to look back and be like, thank God. Because you look back and you're like, whoa, I wouldn't have learned that thing or I wouldn't have gotten to this other thing or whatever it might be. I think that there's so many business folks and marketing folks are super attached to the outcome. And what do you say to that? If someone's listening and they're very much attached to the outcome, I need this many people to buy my course. I need to make this much money this year. I need to be asked on this stage. They're tied to the outcome. What do you say to them? If they're genuinely opening their hearts to manifestation, like I'm going to work my butt off and I'm going to manifest. I'd say take that list that you just wrote and tear it up and burn it because none of that will happen if you're in that energy. And what I would say is get back into the feeling of what you want to create. Get back into the feeling and the desire of how you serve. Get back into the feeling and the energy of what brings you joy. And then sit back down and say, here's the plan I'm going to lay out to achieve these desires. Or here's the steps I want to take. Or here's what I'm going to do today rather than 50 other things. Because for instance, you know, I've been in situations where like when you're when when you when you're the creator of the business and you're the head marketer of the business and all the things, we, you know, just like you, I am very similar, that people can look at you and be like, oh, well, we need to get to this point at this stage and this point at this stage. And it starts to feel like, you're, you know, a machine and you have to, and I've said to my team, like, I don't create like that. You know, speaking of you and your team and your business, what do you think is one of the coolest things ever that you've manifested? It's so funny. I have this Oprah, this picture of Oprah right here. <laughs> I just looked at her. That might be one of the cooler things that I did actually manifest because I let it go. Randomly, I looked at Oprah. <laughs> Love her. I mean, who has a picture of Oprah in their podcast studio? That is amazing. So tell me this, walk me through this. You say you manifested that. What did it look like? What did it look like to manifest you literally getting on Oprah? Well, I was young, you know, I was in my 20s, I was late 20s. I was on Oprah at 30, maybe. I mean, I was in my late 20s. And I was like definitely manic manifesting. And like Oprah's at the time, it was like the internet was not where it is. So it was like Oprah was the holy grail for like everything. And I remember there was like a, like holding on. And then I really let it go. Actually, I'm going to totally take that back. I was not holding on to it. I knew in my body and I knew in my heart and I practiced this beautiful prayer from A Course in Miracles. Those who are certain of the outcome can afford to wait and wait without anxiety. Whoa, one more time. Say it one more time. Those who are certain of the outcome can afford to wait and wait without anxiety. So in your mind, you're like, I know I'm going to be with Oprah. I know it's going to happen. I don't know when. I don't know how. I know it's going to happen. So I'm willing to be patient and be open to what comes my way. Yeah. 
And I continued to bring my energy to what I was doing. I continued to enjoy what I was doing. I continued to feel as the, this is the, where the act as if works, feel as though I was in that energetic state of like, yeah, I am Oprah material, you know, even if it wasn't even close to that yet. And I some you know, five or six years of my career went by and my phone rang and there was like a, and I would sit in my meditation, I'd look at Oprah on the vision board and I'd feel the feeling of what it would be like to sit with her. I felt, and like tears would just roll down my face. And that's manifesting when you feel it. And then I got this phone call from Chicago. There's the Harpo Studios. And I didn't know that. I was people with this Chicago number. And this woman's like, hey, I'm the producer on Oprah Super Soul Sunday. We'd like to have you on. And I was like, I've just been waiting for you to call. Thanks. So happy you're here finally. Okay. So for my listeners, because I'm very new to all things manifestation, and imagine what that would feel like, that you you really want something and you've done the work to manifest it and you've shown up for yourself and then it happens and you were so certain of it that you said, I've been waiting for this or there it is. I knew this was coming. That has to be an amazing, a fantastic feeling. And it makes me think, how much does gratitude play into manifestation? It plays a lot because I think that like I said earlier, when you appreciate what you do have, you create more of what you want. So when we lean into appreciation, and when I was able to lean into the joy of my work, and like, oh, and that was back in the day when I would put on a talk every month, and I was going, this is like where I want to get back to, really. And, you know, just having fun and having joy and just like seeing people's faces just change when they said the spiritual experience. It just being in that space just took away any feelings of lack. And it just put me into this just full-blown energy and point of attraction for more and more and more of that, of that, of that, of that, of that. And so when you're in your joy, whatever that joy brings, whatever it comes to you, however it comes to you, when you're in what lights you up and in your joy, and I mean this, it's not like a stupid like Instagram quote, it's a real thing when you're living and dwelling in that feeling of what brings you joy, you are manifesting. That is what manifestation is. Perfect place to end. I love that. And I really hope that hit home for those listening. So here's what's cool. I came up with this idea to talk about manifesting near the beginning of the year. I sent you a text. Hey, will you come on the show? And you're like, yeah. And it's a perfect time because if people want to get into my uh, manifesting challenge, it's happening. And if you're listening to this afterwards, you can get into the Gabby app and you could go through the challenge because it's in there as well. So there's two different ways to do this. And actually, that's like that nice place to leave because let me talk about what I want to manifest for my career and show your listeners in real time. Will that show allow you to feel the vibration of what it feels like to hear someone speak of what they want to manifest in their career? right? So I created this app called the Gabby Coaching Membership. It's the place where I've democratized my work. I've got the most epic software now that can hold space in a most, in a really soothing way. Like I really wanted to make it feel soothing when you entered, where you have these libraries of meditations and workshops and weekly coaching and guided meditations and get Gabby section where it's like, you can have me on speed dial. You can just go into the app and I want to get Gabby. And it's like, you're having an anxiety attack and you just press a button and it's like, boom, you can just have me help you for two minutes, just relax you and calm your nervous system. Or you need to fall asleep, get Gabby. Or you're going on a date, get Gabby. Or you want to pick up a drink and you don't want to, get Gabby. There's all of this beautiful offering inside this one app and it's it's a membership app. And I created it because I wanted to make it easy for people to have access to my work or to coaching that if they decide to find me as their coach that they resonated with and have A plus coaching at a very affordable price in their pocket. And I just care deeply, deeply, deeply about what the human condition is dealing with at this time. And I care so deeply about how people feel on a day-to-day -day basis. And I've figured it out for people. I figure, I've devoted my entire life to really living these practices that I teach. And so putting all of that into this app was like 
this big pinnacle moment for me to be like, oh, wow, you're struggling. I can just give this thing to you. I can just offer this opportunity for you. I can give you seven days to try this for free. And so that feels so empowering to me and I feel so aligned with it and I feel so connected to it that I don't believe, I only believe that it is going to have a major impact on the world. I only believe that. And of course, you have to build it and you have to invest in it and you have to build the team to build it and get around it. And all that is the actions we have to take. And anytime I was taking those actions out of alignment with that joy, I had to stop and redirect and then go back into that joy and that commitment to this person and commitment to their desires and commitment to my desire to serve and the joy of creation and get back on my audio and record another meditation and have it be so awesome that it makes me cry and then send it off and say, angels, thank you for delivering this exactly who needs it. And that's how I'm going to manifest my app being the most beautiful and most prominent, most successful app for people who are looking to have a spiritual coach in their pocket. And that feeling I have right now, of I just want to go create awesome content, Amy. I just want to go make it so good. And I just want to work with people who just love it so much, as much as I do. That's all I need. That's all I need. Because every action I take will be in alignment with that desire. And so it is. I already love the app. It's already a huge hit, but I'm really excited to see what it does in 2024. So if you want to get into the challenge, I mean, the best way to do it is to go try seven days for free. Go to deargabby.com forward slash app and you can try seven days of this challenge totally free. And if you like it, you can keep going because we're in day two of the challenge right now. So you can just go back to day one and get going. Go in. Enjoy it. Perfect. So deargabby.com forward slash app. I'll put all links in the show notes. Gabby, thank you so very much for starting us on our journey of manifestation. It's a perfect time of year. We've got our goals, we've got our revenue goals and our profit goals, and we're thinking about all of our strategies. But what if we added a little manifestation to our marketing plan? I feel like that's going to take everything to the next level. So thank you so much for spending this time with us. I love you dearly, and I'm so grateful for our friendship. I love you, sweetheart. Thank you for having me. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Okay, my friend, I hope you loved this episode. I just love Gabby so much. And every time she shares her wisdom, I am ready for it. I'm like, okay, tell me everything you know. So I really am going to take some of these strategies that she shared about manifestation, and I'm going to work them into my daily life. And I hope that you will as well. I think if you're not into manifestation or you've never really focused on it, I think this fresh new perspective and maybe a new practice, it could only serve us, right? It could only do good because focusing on gratitude, focusing on service and love and faith, I mean, you can't go wrong. So even just using manifestation to change your mindset, to get into a more positive, abundant place, I just love it for that alone, but I know it's so much more powerful and could do so much for our lives. I think my biggest takeaway is when Gabby talked about letting go of the control. Like if you are holding something tight, if you are white knuckling, if you are trying to control everything about a situation, that is not manifestation. And that's where I think it could drive us a little bit crazy in terms of wanting something so bad and obsessing about it in a way that doesn't serve us. So letting go of the tight grip, letting go of control and focusing on gratitude I can, I can get behind that. And so I don't know. We'll see how my manifestation journey goes this year. I'm definitely going to dive into it deeper now that I talked to Gabby about it. But I want to hear, have you ever manifested anything, especially in your business? Are you open to it? I want to know because, you know, this is new for me. So I'm just at Amy Porterfield on Instagram. So if you go to Instagram, you look at at Amy Porterfield, you'll find me. Send me a DM. Tell me, are you going to get behind this manifestation for the new year? Have you already done it? Share with me your stories. All right. So I hope you love this episode. I have more coming your way on Thursday, more entrepreneurial goodness. So stay tuned. I'll see you soon.